Hi guys, it is a gorgeous day here in the end times in paradise here on Thursday, April 21st, 2016. And I, guys, I just finished my, my day late stoner rant, totally forgetting that 420 was, uh, that 420 came and went yesterday and now I'm coming at you with my second daylay rant I've somehow I was under the impression that the six-year anniversary of the BP blowout was going to be tomorrow on April 22nd which is Earth Day and I was gonna I was going to go celebrate that anniversary tomorrow and, and then I find out, your old dumb stoner, that I completely missed the anniversary of the Deepwater Horizon blowout. So uh, I'm going to bring you this rant to celebrate that and as long as we're over there celebrating the collapse of the Gulf of Mexico, a few other pertinent related stories. Uh, from around the planet uh, to go along with it to look at the health of our oceans going into Earth Day tomorrow. So let me dive right into it. There are several choices I could have done about this $20 billion settlement BP coughing up about 20 billion dollars uh, that would be 20 billion dollars to BP for destroying uh, an ecosystem for probably uh, eternity there that fine would be equal about me paying a $50 parking ticket is how much effect it would have on my life and that $20 billion is about how much it will affect BP's bottom line. But anyway, that said, let's check in to the Gulf of Mexico to see how things look six years later. And we have this report on deep water horizon anniversary dolphins and everything else face decades of recovery. <laughs> Six years ago, the Deepwater Horizon oil rig exploded in the Gulf of Mexico, killing 11 workers and spewing supposedly 205 million gallons of crude oil, devastating wildlife and coastal communities. <coughs> and now it appears that it will likely take 40 to 50 years for populations of bottlenose dolphins to recover from the disaster, according to this new study led by Kathleen Colgrove, a veterinarian pathologist uh, examining dolphin deaths in, this, in the oil spill zone. Uh, that recovery may seem long, but because of the effects uh, in adult dolphin females and stillborn newborn dolphins, scientists think that the estimates are accurate. Yes, uh, and, and it's not just dolphins. Uh, six years after the disaster, researchers are finding long-term damage in a broad range of marine creatures. Uh, this is quoting a, yet another, a, another report from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Quote, Current evidence suggests that the Deepwater Horizon oil spill is a contributor, yes it is, to the largest and longest lasting die-off in the Gulf of Mexico. They summarized the 
body of work about dolphins is, quote, a picture of chronic, poor health, failed pregnancies, and increased mortality of dolphins in the aftermath and footprint of the Deepwater Horizon oil spill. Jesus, and then they look into another document called the Programmatic Damage Assessment and Restoration Plan, sounding like all these other uh, doomsday reports. Jesus. Uh, to date, data show that dolphins, uh, particularly Louisiana's estuary dolphins, which live closest to the shore, were killed by the oil at high rates right when it happened, and today are still struggling to carry their babies to term. Oh, Lord. Uh, the overall findings are echoed in hundreds of other species uh, other than dolphins right down to horse flies. Uh, quote, while nobody cares much about this, this blood-sucking nemesis, the horse fly is a bio-indicator of the entire food web in marshes. Uh, good God. What else do we see here, guys? How about damaged gills and livers and flounders? Adverse effects at all life stages of oysters? DNA damage in turtles? Growth and reproductive issues in fish. Good Lord, this guy. Don't forget the sperm whales, the bride's whales, losing 22% of its population. Uh, and of course, what does BP have to say about all these reports? BP has consistently denied any culpability for animal die-offs. In the case of dolphins, for instance, BP spokesperson Jeff Morell has said that nothing definitively links sickness and death in the Gulf dolphins to exposure from the blown out well. And sometimes it is tough to, re to refute BP statements because while the massive amounts uh, of, d of data collected by researchers have been long available online, some researchers who worked on the damage assessment have been barred from speaking without, with reporters about their research. And uh, then uh, anybody who thinks it's just the oil that caused the problems, don't forget all of the problems caused by this, this, this shit uh, d oil disbursement called Corexit. Corexit. Uh, An ingredient in Corexit uh, has identified the compound as a likely obesogen, an endocrine disruptor that has the potential to alter a fetus's stem cells. Uh, such effects could be generational in oil-exposed people leading to more newborns that are predisposed to obesity, blah, blah, blah. Oh my 
you know it goes on and on if the if the oil don't kill you the uh, the corrects it corrects it will corrects it I anyway guys and as long as we're talking about the Gulf of Mexico and as long as I'm sitting here ranting why don't we go a little bit south of the Gulf of Mexico to Florida Bay off the coast of the soon-to-be underwater uh, Everglades where we see this story underwater zombie grass signals trouble for Florida fishermen decades ago the sight of seagrass swaying beneath the waters of South Florida conjured romance for those who dangle their fishing lines in hopes of catching redfish, snook, or mangrove snapper. But now, seagrass is dying at a rate unseen in about 30 or 40 years off the southern tip of Florida. This is fishing guy Xavier Figueredo, quote, it is like a desert, he said, peering into the water where only an occasional needlefish or ray could be seen scooting along a bottom clustered with matted, dead, underwater grasses. Uh, Seagrass provides shelter for small fish. Uh, which are eaten by bigger fish and serves as the foundation of the marine food chain. Uh, but this year it's uh, is pretty much non-existent. And it looks like, I guess, the finger in this story not being pointed at BP, but to Florida's sugar cane industry. Jesus, uh, leading to the zombie apocalypse. So, I'm not going to get into all of this, how the sh all of this shit from the sugar cane industry washing into the, uh, washing into the ocean and first the grass detaches from the bottom it floats to the surface during the day and sinks again at night earning it the nickname zombie grass this is wetland ecologist uh, steve david davis quote it's dead it just doesn't know it yet it is dramatic. It looks like a disaster area. Okay, so that's the story from Florida Bay. And we're going to go from there uh, over there to Vietnam, uh, where we see this story today. Vietnam investigates mass fish deaths on the eve of Earth Day, uh, Vietnam Thursday said it was investigating whether pollution is to blame for a spate of mysterious mass fish deaths along the country's central coast after huge amounts of dead marine life have washed ashore in recent days. Tons of fish including rare species which live far offshore and in deep water have been discovered along beaches along the country's central coast. Uh, quote, we have never seen anything like it. One of these fish huggers. Uh, the strange situation first came to light when farmed fish in the area began began dying in great numbers and now this mysterious fish kills moving from farm fish uh, to the wild fish 
uh, quoting these people whose names I can't begin to pronounce. Uh, quote, if you sail just three miles offshore, you can see dead fish all over the ocean floor. Uh, early signs point to the fish having been poisoned by unidentified substances. And, uh, but no one, no one knows what the hell this is about. In the meantime, we have asked people not to eat the fish and not to use the fish as food for their livestock. Uh, the central coast of Vietnam is home to a sprawling economic zone which houses numerous industrial plants. And uh, much of the country's exports, export income depends on seafood. There you go. And we'll wind up, of course, I've already mentioned this story yesterday in my climate change meltdown roundup, as we see coral bleaching now hits 93% of Australia's Great Barrier Reef. Australia's Great Barrier Reef is suffering its worst coral bleaching in recorded history with 93% of the World Heritage Site now affected, uh, scientists said Wednesday. And as I mentioned uh, yesterday, this is no way limited to the Great Barrier Reef, but is all over the Pacific Ocean. Anyway, guys, so much for celebrating Earth Day. As tomorrow, we will be flooded uh, by stories about all of these eco-friendly products. How you can save the planet uh, by buying eco-friendly products. Not sure if I'm even going to have uh, an Earth Day rant because me and my little earth dog are going to go camping at the beach for the full moon for a few days and uh, not sure if I will come at you with my Earth Day ecological meltdown roundup rant or not. But for this ecological meltdown roundup rant, bye guys.